Good afternoon, I'm Vincent Hollins. My cell phone tail and lower had the PICO question. With patients who have different types of ulcers, what is the effect of electrotherapy versus comparative treatment on the healing of their wounds? All right, so we started this off by doing a search of three different uh, search engines. We used PubMed, Pedro, and Google Scholar using these terms you see here. Um, it took us about a month to find what we wanted, five articles that we, we selected, and we also used a little bit of from our textbooks from our class with uh, physical rehabilitation and physical agents in rehabilitation. All right, so the theory behind electric stimulation is that it affects various types of cells and their activities by supporting, altering, or providing electrical currents to accelerate wound healing. So some of those cell types that it's going to attract to the area uh, are going to alter their cell membrane function. It's also going to modify the endogenous electrical potential of the tissue along with the healing potential, uh, reduce edema, enhance antimicrobial activity, increase protein synthesis, and cell migration, while also promoting circulation and improving tissue oxygenation. Um, it's also going to, electrical stimulation can trigger calcium channels in the fibroblast cell membrane to increase intracellular calcium levels and stimulate the fibroblast to synthesize more collagen and DNA. All right, so it, electrical stimulation can promote wound healing by decreasing the overall cost of care, uh, improving the quality of life of the patients. It also can will enable patients to participate more fully in their, their daily activities of life um, and their, their rehab program. And it's going to optimize their functional outcomes, which overall is what we want to do. Um, however, it's going to require an interdisciplinary approach. It's not going to be just physical therapists. There'll be other people involved, other specialists. Um, electrical stimulation can also aid wound healing it especially does when it's applied in conjunction with the standard wound care that we'll talk about here in a little bit. There's a variety of options depending on the goals of treatment, uh, the type of the wound, and the condition of the patient. Um, things it can do, it can eliminate the bacterial load, it can promote granulation, decrease inflammation, reduce edema, um, you're gonna re you can reduce the wound related pain, and you can also augment blood flow. All right, so the patient population of the articles that we reviewed all used human subjects. Most of them were older and either had some sort of a spinal cord injury or possibly diabetes. Uh, there were spinal cord studies as well that didn't necessarily use older patients. It ranged from like 18 to 70. And they had grade 2 to 4 pressure ulcers. And then some of the, the older patients, like I already mentioned, had diabetic ulcers. Um, so the precautions and contraindications of electrical stimulation some precautions are going to be your cardiac disease, you don't want to affect that, the heart rhythm. Um, impaired mentation or sensation because you don't want to, they need, they need to be able to communicate if there's any issues going on, if it's burning or if it's too much uh, current going through. Uh, Lignant tumors can spread the, the cancer to other places, we want to avoid that. And skin irritation, can it, it can irritate the skin more, that's one of the, the adverse reactions of the, the pad placement, if it's there for too long or if it, if it gets turned up too high, it can, it can cause some sort of dermatitis or something like that. And then contraindications, you don't want to place it over a pacemaker or, or any if it's on someone who has any kind of unstable arrhythmias because it can affect their heartbeat and can cause death. You don't want to place it over the carotid sinus. You don't want to put it anywhere near someone who has a, a, a venous or arterial thrombosis or any kind of uh, blood clot, and then with pregnant women, you don't want to put it anywhere near where the, the baby is, so the pelvis, the abdomen, the little back, anywhere near that. You just want to avoid that. All right, so standard wound care, what, they, what it's kind of defined as is just kind of changing the dressings, as you, you would normally assume, cleaning the, the wound, and then also they can do debridement of the, of the wound, and they can also suggest that some person might alter their diet to kind of just help with the wound healing. There are also different types of physical therapy that can be done, which we're going to talk about. And then there's a couple of different surgical procedures to repair any kind of skin flap or muscle flap injury. All right, the first article we reviewed is by Lala et al. And it was a systematic review, so it's going to be pretty much the bottom line up front as far as what we want to get or get our point across because it was it's also very recent being from 2015. Um, 
basically what they've said is that electrical stimulation is an effective adjunct therapy, so it can be used along with the standard wound care, which we just talked about, for treating pressure ulcers with in people with spinal cord injuries. Um, it was noted that it decreased the, the, the pressure ulcer size at a, at a little bit better rate and increased the, the closure rate better than the standard wound care or if you had any kind of, if, when they used the sham uh, electrical stimulation. And there's many different studies that used just different types of uh, electrical stimulation and they all showed some sort of positive results. They also determined that electrical stimulation is safe. There's only one out of the 15 studies that had any minor adverse reactions and it was very few and it was just dermatitis from having the, the pad on the same spot for hours at a time. Um, electrical stimulation has been found to be more effective. This is the conclusion from, from their article is it's more found to be more effective than standard wound care and obviously than, than the sham uh, electrical stimulation. And it is also one article that they had that they reviewed said that it was uh, cost effective. So that's, that's kind of just the bottom line up front. Uh, one of the articles we reviewed about standard wound care and electrical stimulation combined is that they resulted in faster reduction in that, that wound size and it was it just made the, the, the wound appear better quicker as it was healing faster. Um, so they used a very low level of e-stim electrical stimulation because for safety reasons and it was applied by unskilled caregivers for sometimes the patient themselves. Uh, so that, that low level didn't have any muscle contraction uh, accompanying with it. Like I already said, it was administered by either the patient or an unskilled caregiver. So that, that, that kind of goes to that cost effectiveness that we talked about before. And it's also time efficient because the patient doesn't have to come in with their, their caregiver to the, the clinic to get treatment. Um, and we already talked about there being just a few minor adverse effects of dermatitis from a prolonged pad placement. However, the re some of the results were kind of not as good as they could have been because of this with the study, because they wanted to have patients wear the pads for eight hours at a time, or eight hours per day, and they, they averaged around three. But they said that the people that, that wore the pads more often, that had, that had the treatment, electrical stimulation treatment, had better results. So electrical stimulation is effective. The articles that we found uh, worked in conjunction with the information that we found out of the textbooks that said electrical stimulation works in conjunction with standard wound care to significantly decrease wound surface area, increase tissue oxygenation, decrease pressure and discomfort, and accelerate wound healing in people with spinal cord injury specifically, but also with diabetic foot ulcers. Um, the information in our textbooks also mentioned the difference between the inflammatory phase versus, versus the proliferation phase. So with the inflammatory phase, they used a high voltage pulse current with a negative polarity. And in the proliferation phase, they used the same current with positive polarity. And they could use it either with direct or indirect wound care. So with the direct, they put the electrical stimulation pad right on the wound, as in this picture. And with indirect, they put the two electrodes outside the wound so the current goes inside. The article by Petrovsky that we found here used the effectiveness of electrical stimulation and heat together. They used a biphasic sine wave and they used local heat with an infrared lamp. They measured the skin blood flow with a Doppler, which is shown in these images here. And with both groups, they both had um, significant decrease in wound area after one month. And the reason why they did these, the reason why they measured heat and electrical stimulation is because they knew that heat alone brings blood to the area, so that would increase um, wound healing. But a, a lot of physical therapists use electrical stimulation and heat, and so they didn't know if it was the heat itself or the electrical stimulation. So that's why they did this study. And they found that in both groups, they significantly decreased the wound surface area, but with the one with electrical stimulation and heat, it was a significant difference, as shown in the graphs here. So to conclude that article, 
um, electrical stimulation works well in conjunction with dry heat, and that study was for diabetic foot ulcers. So by Barnes et al., they studied the effectiveness of electrical stimulation when compared with standard wound care or sham stimulation. So with the electrical stimulation, they showed that it significantly increased the percentage of change of the wound. So that decreased the size of the wound. They used two different currents. So they used pulse current and they also used alternating current. And both significantly increased the change. Um, but that was over the entire study. So if you looked at it in smaller increments of time, there wasn't a difference in the change. So in conclusion, we found that electrical stimulation can be used for wound ulcer treatment. Um, it depends on where you place the electrodes, whether it's positive or negative polarity to promote healing. You can also use it in different phases of the healing when you're talking about inflammation or not inflammation. Um, generally, it's considered safe if used correctly, and we found that most of the time it is effective, but more effective when used in conjunction with other modalities. We also found that electrical stimulation in conjunction with standard wound care is cost effective. Some of our studies suggested future research in these areas. So they would like you to look at electrical stimulation in terms of wound severity and glycemic control, as well as the extent of diabetic neuropathies. Um, they, would, they suggest that we also look at the effectiveness of different treatment modalities, because with electrical stimulation, you can have different currents, different modes, and so more specific in, the, in that area. Also, the effective duration of treatment. Many of the studies looked at uh, shorter time, longer time, and so maybe some more duration of treatment effectiveness. We can also look at, does electrical stimulation work on all types of ulcers? Um, and then a lot of these studies, well, some of the studies were done not as great as they could have been. So in future research, try to minimize bias and anything like that. Electrical stimulation is safe. Effective. Cost effective. And tolerable. So consider using it with your future wound patients.